There are no grades of reality. There are grades of experience for the individual, but not of reality. Whatever may be the experiences, the experiencer is one and the same. The self is certainly within the direct experience of everyone, but not as one imagines it to be. It is only as it is. The state in which the unbroken experience of existence consciousness is attained by the still mind alone is samadhi. That still mind which is adorned with the attainment of the limitless supreme self alone is the reality of God. When the mind is in communion with the self in darkness, it is called nidra, sleep. That is, the immersion of the mind in ignorance. Immersion in a conscious or wakeful state is called samadhi. Samadhi is continuous inherence in the self in a waking state. Nidra or sleep is also inherent in the self, but in an unconscious state. In Sahaja Samadhi, the communion is continuous. The immersion of the mind in the self, but without its destruction, is Kevala Nirvikalpa Samadhi. In this state, one is not free from vasanas, and so one does not therefore attain mukti. Only after the vasanas have been destroyed can one attain liberation. Even from the beginning, even though one practices Kevala Nirvikalpa Samadhi for years together, if one has not rooted out the vasanas, one will not attain liberation.
holding on to the supreme state is Samadhi. When it is with effort due to mental disturbances, it is Savikalpa. When these disturbances are absent, it is Nervakalpa. Remaining permanently in the primal state without effort is Sahaja. Abiding permanently in any of these samadhis, either Savikalpa or Nervakalpa, is Sahaja, the natural state. What is body consciousness? It is the insentient body plus consciousness. Both of these must lie in another consciousness which is absolute and unaffected and which remains as it always is with or without the body consciousness. What does it then matter whether the body consciousness is lost or retained? Provided one is holding on to that pure consciousness. Total absence of body consciousness has the advantage of making the samadhi more intense. Although it makes no difference to the knowledge of the Supreme. Samadhi, Turiya, the fourth state, and Nervakalpa all have the same implication, that is, awareness of the self. Turiya literally means the fourth state the Supreme Consciousness, as distinct from the other three states of waking, 
dreamy and dreamless sleep. The fourth state is eternal and the other three states come and go in it. In Turiya, there is the awareness that the mind has merged in its source, the heart, and is quiescent there. Although some thoughts still impinge on it, and the senses are still somewhat active. In Nerva Culpa, the senses are inactive and thoughts are totally absent. Hence, the experience of pure consciousness in this state is intense and blissful. Turiya is obtainable in Savi Kalpa Samadhi. You ask what is the difference between the bliss enjoyed in sleep and the bliss enjoyed in Turiya. There are not different blisses. There is only one bliss, which includes the bliss enjoyed in the waking state. The bliss of all kinds of beings from the lowest animal to the highest Brahma. That bliss is the bliss of the self. The bliss which is enjoyed unconsciously in sleep is enjoyed consciously in Turiya. That is the only difference. The bliss enjoyed in the waking state is second hand. It is an adjunct of the real bliss. Upadi Ananda. In yoga, the term samadhi refers to some kind of trance and there are various kinds of samadhi. But the samadhi I speak of is different. It is sahaja samadhi, the natural state. From here, 
you have steadiness and you remain calm and composed even while you are active. You realize that you are moved by the deeper, real self within. You have no worries, no anxieties, no cares. For you come to realize that there is nothing belonging to you. You know that everything is done by something with which you are in conscious union. The Nirvikalpa Samadhi of Raja Yoga may have its use, but in Jnana Yoga, this natural state or abidance in the natural state itself is the Nirvikalpa state. In this natural state, the mind is free from doubts. It has no need to swing between alternatives of possibilities and probabilities. It sees no differences of any kind. It is sure of the truth because it feels the presence of the real. Even when it is active, it knows it is active in the reality, the self, the supreme being. In deep sleep, the mind is merged and not destroyed. That which merges reappears. It may happen in meditation also. But the mind which is destroyed cannot reappear. The yogi's aim must be to destroy it and not to sink into sleep. Liar. In the peace of meditation, liar or deep sleep sometimes ensues, but it is not enough. 
It must be supplemented by other practices for destroying the mind. Some people have gone into yogic samadhi with a trifling thought and after a long time awakened in the trail of the same thought. In the meantime, generations have passed in the world. Such a yogi has not destroyed their mind. The true destruction of the mind is the non-recognition of it as being apart from the self. Even now, the mind is not. Recognize it. How can you do it if not in everyday activities which go on automatically? Know that the mind promoting them is not real but is only a phantom proceeding from the self. That is how the mind is destroyed. In both Kevala and Sahaja Samadhi, the mind is immersed in the bliss of the self. In the former, physical movements may cause disturbance to the meditator because the mind has not completely died out. It is still alive and can, as after deep sleep, at any moment be active again. It is compared to a bucket, which, although completely submerged under water, can be pulled out by a rope, which is still attached to it. In Sahaja, the mind is sunk completely into the self, like the bucket which has got drowned in the depths of the well, along with its rope. In Sahaja, there is nothing left to be disturbed or pulled back to the world. One's activities then resemble that of the child who sucks its mother's milk in sleep and is hardly aware of the feeding.
You ask how one can function in the world in such a state. But one who accustoms themselves naturally to meditation and enjoys the bliss of meditation will not lose their samadhi state whatever external work they do. Whatever thoughts may come to them. That is Sahaja Nervakalpa. Sahaja Nervakalpa is total destruction of the mind. Whereas Kevala Nervakalpa is liar temporary abeyance of the mind. Those who are in the Laya Samadhi will still have to bring the mind back under control from time to time. If the mind is destroyed as it is in Sahaja Samadhi it will never sprout again. Whatever is done by such people is just incidental. They will never slide down from their high state. Those that are in the Kevala Nervakalpa state are not realized. They are still seekers. Those who are in the Sahaja state are like a light in a windless place or the ocean without waves. That is there is no movement in them. They cannot find anything which is different from themselves. For those who do not reach that state, everything appears to be different from themselves. Samadhi alone can reveal the truth. Thoughts cast a veil over reality. And so it is not realized as such in states other than Samadhi. In Samadhi, there is only the feeling I am, and no thoughts. The experience of I am is being still.
you ask how you can repeat the experience of samadhi or the stillness that you obtain here in my presence. Your present experience is due to the influence of the atmosphere in which you find yourself. Can you have it outside this atmosphere? The experience is spasmodic. Until it becomes permanent, practice is necessary. The tranquil clarity, which is the void of mental turmoil, alone is the samadhi, which is the firm base for liberation. By earnestly trying to destroy the deceptive mental turmoil, Experience that samadhi as the peaceful consciousness which is inner clarity. External samadhi is holding on to the reality while witnessing the world. Without reacting to it, from within. There is a stillness of a waveless ocean. The internal samadhi involves loss of body consciousness. For the mind to sink into that state, a strong conviction is necessary that I am the self, transcending the mind. and the phenomena. What does it matter if the mind is active? It is so only on the substratum of the self. Hold the self, even during mental activities. People have all sorts of notions about Nervakalpa Samadhi. All sorts of fantastic notions. Some yogis by breathing exercises allow themselves to fall into a cataleptic state 
far deeper than dreamless sleep, in which they are aware of nothing, absolutely nothing, and they glorify it as nerva culpa. Some others think that once you dip into nerva culpa, you become an altogether different being. Still others take nerva culpa to be attainable only through a trance in which the world consciousness is totally obliterated as in a fainting fit. All this is due to their viewing it intellectually. Nervakulpa is chit, effortless, formless consciousness. Where does the terror come in? And where is the mystery in being oneself? To some people whose minds have become ripe from a long practice in the past, Nerva Culpa comes suddenly as a flood. But to others, it comes in the course of their spiritual practice. A practice which slowly wears down the obstructing thoughts and reveals a screen of pure awareness, I, I. Further practice renders the screen permanently exposed. This is self-realization, mukti or sahaja samadhi, the natural, effortless state. mere non-perception of the differences outside is not the real nature of firm nerva culpa. Know that the non-rising of differences in the dead mind alone is the true nerva culpa. The fear and quaking of one's body that you may experience while one is entering samadhi is due to the slight ego consciousness still remaining. But when this dies completely, without leaving even a trace, One abides as the vast space of mere consciousness where bliss alone prevails and the quaking stops. In samadhi itself, 
there is only perfect peace. Ecstasy comes when the mind revives at the end of samadhi with the remembrance of the peace of samadhi. In devotion, the ecstasy comes first. It is manifested by tears of joy, the hair standing on end, and vocal stumbling. When the ego finally dies and the Sahaja is one, these symptoms and the ecstasies cease. You ask about obtaining cities, supernatural powers. In order to display cities, there must be others to recognize them. That means there is no jnana in the one who displays them. Therefore, Cities are not worth a thought. Jnana alone is to be aimed at and gained. It makes no difference whether you call it meditation or austerities or absorption or anything else. That which is steady, continuous like the flow of oil is austerity, meditation and absorption. To be one's own self is samadhi. It is true samadhi, only if you know yourself. What is the use of sitting still for some time, like a lifeless object? Suppose you get a boil on your hand and have it operated on under anaesthetic. You don't feel any pain at the time, but does that mean that you were in samadhi? It is the same with this meditation too. One has to know what samadhi is. And how can you know it without knowing the reality? If the reality, the self, is known, 
Samadhi will be known automatically. Samadhi is one's natural state. It is the undercurrent in all the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. The self, the reality, is not in these states, but these states are in the reality. If we get samadhi in our waking state, that will persist in deep sleep also. The distinction between consciousness and unconsciousness belongs to the realm of mind, which is transcended by the state of the real. Sages say that the state of equilibrium, which is devoid of the ego, alone is Mona Samadhi, the Samadhi of silence, the pinnacle of knowledge. until one attains Mona Samadhi, the state in which one is the egoless reality. Seek only the annihilation of I as your aim. <laughs> 